Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, stability for nonlinear in general systems, um, but applied to uh, obviously uh, linear systems. Um, we talked about stability briefly in the, well, not not that briefly, but in the first half of the class for transfer functions and uh, in the frequency domain. Um, so in that in that setting, right? We looked at um, just a general transfer function. Let's say g of s is equal to. Uh, let's bring up that guy. Okay, g of s is equal to the product of a set of poles or a set of zeros in the numerator, and then in the denominator, we had a set of zeros, right? For n n poles, and let's say this is a strictly proper uh, transfer function m zeros for zero uh, n greater than m. Um, uh, okay, so for this guy, for this guy, we said that if all of the roots of the denominator, namely every p i, every point where p i is equal to um, where s is equal to pi, if all those poles were on the left half plane, or the real components of those poles were on the left half plane, then we said that this system was stable. Okay, so again, just as a refresher, um, if all the poles here are, if this is the s plane, so this is the imaginary of s, this is the real, components of S, uh, and all the poles here are on the left half plane. They could be way out here. As long as they were on the left half plane. We also said that if there were some on the real axis, or the imaginary axis, then we, that's marginal stability, right? As long as you only had a, uh, a single, um, pull on those points, uh, then that was a uh, marginal stability. Um, but the crux was that we had the real components of our poles pi is less than zero. This is this implies stability. However, for general nonlinear systems, uh, this doesn't work because we can't just take a nonlinear system and plug it into a transfer function form. Um, we can linearize it about a point, um, but that's only a look that'll only then tell us locally about the, the system and won't tell us globally about the system. Um, great. So, for stability itself, let's bring back up my text box. Um, so, for general nonlinear systems, as we saw at the beginning of the course, um, as well, don't eat my couch. X dot is for general, so general nonlinear system. Uh, X dot is equal to f of x t, um, and an equilibrium point. Equilibrium point uh, x star. Um, the Jacobian. J. Um, Actually, the Jacobian, let's call it A of F with respect to X is defined, is defined as, okay, again, and we've seen this before, right? A is equal to partial derivative of F with respect to X. All evaluated at x equals x star. Okay. So we've seen this numerous times. Um, 
but for this case, uh, locally around this equilibrium point, e st uh, x star, we could say that the equilibrium point star is considered asymptotically stable. If, because this is a linear system now, right? Um, and if it's time invariant, so then all, if all of the the real components of the eigenvalues of A are less than zero. Uh, we have asymptotic stability, uh, and this is this will be for all for all i. It's also unstable if the real component of lambda i. is greater than zero for all i. All right, and then just for completeness, uh, we're gonna say that where lambda i of a are the, is defined as the, the eigenvalues. Uh, is the i. value of a great but what but what is stability right and what kinds of systems are they are, are they used for um, so in general we can talk about this notion of uh, the Apanov stability okay and we can talk about it for um, different equations. So we can talk about it for dynamic systems. Um, that are classified as, I decided you guys are also just watching this video for that guy. Because he's way more interesting than anything I'm doing. All right, so we can define two different types of, of systems. Yeah, x dot is equal to f of x, u, and t. Um, this is called a non-autonomous system. Or time varying, right? Uh, let's change this to, yeah, colon. Okay, so this is um, where the dynamics are a function of time. All right, then we could have the case where we just have x and u and no t. Okay, so we're gonna call this an autonomous system. Namely, the dynamics are not a function of time. So this is the difference between time varying and time invariant systems. Uh, but for either of these cases, we can talk about equilibrium points to these systems. Um, So we can talk about equilibrium points of these systems. Um, so what it, what it, we talked about equilibrium points before. What are equilibrium points? Right, the points where the dynamics or the rates of change of the system are equal to zero.
But for these types of systems, we can have the case where there, there exists one or more equilibrium points. Okay, so what would what kind of system would this look like? Um, we saw it in the midterm, um, namely if we have, let's say we have the system x dot is equal to sine of x. Sorry, I, <laughs> he was playing with a toy. Um, so if we have the system uh, x dot is equal to sine of x, then we can show that if the dynamics, if the rates of change are equal to zero, um, so then we get zero is equal to sine of x, right? And so now we want to show, we want to find all x such that the sine of x is equal to zero. So that implies that x star is equal to kn, right? For all k, for all k equal to from negative infinity out to negative two, negative one, zero, Oops. one, two, right? So the midterm asks uh, for all, I think it asks were there only two equilibrium points for and for all x, right? Which is wrong. There's only there's two equilibrium points between zero and two pi open, but not for all x, right? As we see right here. Um, so we could also have the case where there exists there exists only one equilibrium point. Um, so this would look like, uh, let's say we look at a linear system, x dot is equal to ax, um, where a is full rank. Okay, so now what's full rank? Uh, if we look, if we remember back to um, linear systems, uh, which you may have taken in uh, your undergrad, then full full rank is the case where you have that all of the row vectors and column vectors are linearly independent, and and so that means that the only time where zero remember we have to set the rates of change equal to zero. The only time that the, this equality is true is when x is equal to zero. So this implies x must be equal to zero. Okay. Next, there may not exist There does not exist any equilibrium points. All right, I'm gonna come back and talk about uh, stability in a minute.